So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends, depending upon which part of the world you are joining us from. And uh, once again, like every month, welcome to this very special, in, I would say, chat with one and only Mr. Suresh Lula, the management consultant, a keynote speaker, trainer, author, storyteller. Every month he has been giving us a feast of, uh, I would say, beautiful stories, which is energizing us to mend our practices, especially in the field of quality. His first one was on legitimatizing absenteeism. Then it was features and failures, sweating the training, customer first always, and today is the fifth one, uh, which is on pills and meals. And let's see what is, of course, in store. The, let me say that what makes Suresh stand above any other thought leader on quality and excellence that I have ever known or come across in my life is his ability to take these complex and deeply layered subjects to their simplest level of understanding. This can only happen when the knowledge of quality and excellence is so deep and so refined that it becomes innate wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, these profound words are not mine, though they reflect my feelings, they reflect my thoughts, but they are from Mr. Vivek Talwar, who is the former chief culture officer of Tata Power, he has so beautifully described what Suresh stands for. And I'll request him now to let's have the peels and meals, the topic for the day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Agarwal. You are very generous with your words. <laughs> you need no introduction to this audience. <clears throat> it seems like we've known each other forever. Uh, our thinking is calibrated. And uh, well, <clears throat> I like to tell stories, and Dr. Agarwal likes to hear stories. And so, <laughs> It's a happy relationship. Very true. Well, this fable is perhaps one of my favorite fables because it takes me back to 1987. And uh, this is the fable. While there's a lot of facts in it and there's very little fiction in it, we're not talking about animals and things like that. We are talking about real people. I may have a little fiction in it, but by and large, you'll get the message. This fable demonstrates, see the problem with your own eyes. Uh, in medical terms, you would call it autopsy, I suppose. Listen to the voice of workers. You know, underlying all this is trustworthiness. The aim of every organization, the aim of every hospital is to be seen as trustworthy in the eyes of its employees, in the eyes of society, in the eyes of patients or customers. And this trustworthiness comes not just from competencies, it comes from a combination of character and competencies. Character of the organization, character of the individuals.
We call it pales and males. So once upon a time in 1987, uh, officers used to have for their needs a clubhouse and workers had a mess. I'm talking about a client in South India, and a heavy equipment manufacturer, earth moving in a place called Tiruvelu. And I can mention the name was Caterpillar. Caterpillar was one of the verticals of Hindustan motors. Now, here are workers. This was a typical canteen. And in this case, the officers club was above the workers canteen. So what was the problem? The problem was that the staircase leading to the officer's club had a lot of garbage below. And one had to use a handkerchief to protect one's nose to take these steps up. A new president, Ramesh Daga a quality enthusiast questioned why this garbage. So he got into the garbage problem and realized that the municipality carried only a load and they had to actually lease out private garbage collection agencies to carry the balance of the load. The private agency was charged in 1987, 7,000 per day for a three shift operation of a plant. What is that? Big money. In 1987, half a crore was big big money. This was cost of poor quality. Apart from the 7,000 was all the wasted food that had been cooked and that was being thrown out. So he appointed a senior management team, mind you, a senior management team to look into this garbage problem. They went about doing an autopsy, speaking to people, finding out what is avoidable waste, what is not avoidable. They asked, why? waste food? And the answer was, sir, we're in South India and you serve us North Indian food. We're in South India and you offer us North Indian food. Two, the lunch break is only 30 minutes. So we've got to stand in certain timelines to get the food. We just take whatever is put into the time. So all this meant that we were wasting food. Why do you take so much food? 
because the ladles are large and that's how they serve. Our thalis are large and that's how they serve. So what was the remedial action? We needed South Indian food. So they engaged with the wives of the workers to decide a menu and create a cuisine that would be enjoyed by the workers. And the wives were rotated on a weekly basis. So it became competitive. Whose wife cooks better? Workers were happy. Two, they discarded the large ladles with small ones. And the large thalis were replaced with small thalis. A lot of money was saved to the extent of one crore per annum. Only through the canteen project. What happened to that money? It was plowed back into worker welfare. They won the trust of the workers. North Indians won the trust of South Indian workers. Today, that canteen is like a recreation center. They put Karen, the walls are adorned with paintings of their children, children of workers. The company also printed a calendar of the 12 best paintings of the workers, the workers' children. What have we learned? Chronic problems tend to become culture issues. Let the waste be there. We've done it for years. You have to challenge the norm. Ramesh Daga did it. See the problem with your eyes. Don't sit in a room and imagine what the problem is. Listen to the voice of workers. Employee delight it seems customer delight. Treat the workers with dignity and earn the trust of workers through your actions. I come back to the word trust. It's all about being trustworthy. Whether you are a graduate from a college joining a hospital, whether you are an employee, whether you're a nurse, whether you are a peon, trustworthiness. You get trustworthy when you have character, integrity. Integrity translated is keep your promises. You promise in your value statement what you will be doing, values. Do it. Walk your values. Two, in character, Learn to define a problem. We tend to define a problem along with a solution or with a blame. Because of so-and-so, we have a problem. Can you objectively define a problem? Cut out the blame. And three, 
communicate. Communicate constantly. Communicate and create situ situations of a win-win for all parties impacted. You saw the burgers canteen cleaned up. They won the trust. Win-win. The workers were happy. Their wives participated. It became a family. Competencies can be the skills that you learn in college and you practice. So the hard skills. The soft skills make the difference. Your bedside manners with your patients. How you treat your workers, etc. How you facilitate a team. When you have all this, you win the trust. And we have peels and meals in every campus. I have my favorite project when you enter a client is, do you have a canteen? Let's start there. The visibility it creates, the cleanliness that unfolds. It's a win-win-win for everybody. So with that, I will conclude my session and hand it over to Dr. Vijay Prabhu. I am sure that all the listeners will agree that this was a fantastic table. And Suresh, by the, I think the biggest lesson that I can see is that how people get used to garbage lying around them. So for many months or years, people were just putting a hanky on their nose and walking up to wherever they were supposed to go. But it took one Ramesh Daga to smell that and to say that, no, I have to do something about it. Now, it is that, I think, a very, very important uh, attribute uh, in the leadership that you have to spot what, where the problems are, where the garbage is. And I can say, as far as hospitals are concerned, they are full of it, not necessarily in the canteen, it could be all around, whether it is in a, a cluttered nurse station, whether it could be uh, my record room or many things. So moment a person who has slight orientation to quality and he has to take these things head on. And when you start to solve that problem, these kind of stories will, I'm sure, definitely come out. I remember, uh, sir, my, my professor of medicine, uh, Dr. Hari Vaishnav, he was a professor of, in Malana Azad Medical College. And at that time, probably we did not understand, but you know, when he used to come for rounds, for the ward rounds, he will start the ward round from the bathrooms. He will go there first of all, he will typically put his finger on a window stilt and try to see if there was a dust in there, etc., etc. And this was a general ward. So the level of cleanliness that was ensured because everyone knew that, well, uh, Dr. Vashno will be coming and taking around. All right. But slowly, gradually, a culture of accepting a certain level of cleanliness was accepted. And there are, of course, innovative solutions to that. I mean, in fact, I uh, remember one of your stories, which you can probably tell again, is how in the Tata group, the washrooms, the bathrooms were, uh, were taken care. That was a fantastic thing that, again, a problem, a chronic problem, but was solved in a very innovative way. And I'll, I'll implore you to, sir, just tell that story. 
है मिस्टर रूसी मोदी द चेयरमैन ऑफ टाटा स्टील एट दैट टाइम you should have a town hall meeting where all the workers assembled and all the management had to sit on a very large stage and uh, answer the questions now as you see modi was I, i was visiting jamshedpur that day and um, there was also ravi shastri the cricketer coaching so he put two of us together on a sofa in the first row and said now watch what happens so questions were asked and the appropriate manager would come and the director would come answer the question and put a timeline to when it will be solved a timeline had to be put so here's one worker who stood up and said that uh, you know our toilets are very very dirty and the officers toilets are so good so mr modi looked at the housekeeping head and asked him to answer it. He said, "Okay, we'll take care of it, and um, it, it, it's easy to solve." So Mr. Modi asked, "How long will it take?" He said, three months." Mr. Modi said, "Rubbish." Is there a carpenter in the audience? And then the sardar came up with a carpenter. He said, "I want to." ask you to move the sign officers from the officers to it to the workers to it and vice versa toilets sorted out within 24 hours not only that he sustained it he said every 3 months we will swap the, the boards and that became a happy story for workers and <laughs> everyone on campus so uh, i think again a, a fantastic tale of how uh, problems can be solved number one through innovation and here of course let's say the observation and courage of a worker to stand up and say some things in front of the whole uh, public and the vision and the leadership of mr modi to kind of uh, create i would think one of the very innovative solution so as i said that first uh, lesson that i am getting out of it is that try to sensitize yourself to look at the garbage around you and to see that you have to tackle it you have to create solutions so that if it is bothering you there is a solution to it and the solution then will of course be by bringing other people around you into the solution just like what was done in this story with the workers that we could just try to find out moment you get deeper into it and you will find out the solution is also not that complex it is only complex so long as you don't dig a little deep into it and i feel that uh, healthcare has huge opportunity sir to to kind of do this exercise and cost of poor quality is of course the a big i would say gain out of the whole exercise but i would say more than that even creating a culture of a clean environment and a culture of uh, treating the workers and the staff fairly and in a just manner is a huge huge positives that can happen out of such episodes or exercises so in fact i will uh, we can implore even people to send their own stories around this story 
because I feel in healthcare, any leader who has uh, walked the care corridors and how they have straightened things out. Uh, I can remember once, you see, I had joined uh, Delhi Medical Association as the secretary of Delhi Medical Association way back in 1976. And I found that there was uh, in the whole building, the first floor was totally kind of packed with, uh, with old records. Medical Association had started in 1914. So there were records every year and there were rooms, three or four rooms filled with the old records. And the our room, which was on the ground floor, I asked the concerned clerk who was the de facto the secretary president because they are the ones who were permanent. People like us were coming and going. And I said, boss, what is in those rooms upstairs? He says, are their old records and you can't touch it. I said, what do you mean you can't touch it? He said, no, no. I said, why can't we dispose the old records off? He said, because that will require a resolution of general body meeting. I said, what stops us from having a general body meeting? So cut the long story, we convene an extraordinary general body meeting. And I said, all the surviving past presidents of the association are a member of this committee and the convener. We will meet every Wednesday at 2 p.m. in the, in the association, take out the report, see, sift it, see whatever is to be preserved and the rest has to be kind of uh, discarded and disposed of. We could liberate out two full beautiful rooms. One could be converted into a library and other could be made into a more of a member's room. And therefore, I'm saying that every nook and corner, there are opportunities for us to clean up things around us. And I think your story today has been a great, great reminder once again for especially I would say people pass in healthcare, because I think the implications here are not only cost of poor quality, because sometimes it is even going to lead to kind of disasters, uh, which may be even leading on to patient safety issues. So to my mind, this has been an extremely great episode. Over to you Suresh, if you feel that you can draw out anything else for the health, health community. Yeah. In, in the uh, 70s and 80s, when the Japanese were taking over American plants, they would go with Japanese methods of management. But what would you expect? Two Japanese would arrive, and they would call all the Americans into a town. And amongst the first things they would emphasize is no one is against quality. No one is against quality. In fact, we all expect quality. It's a principle. It's a principle value. So don't talk about quality. The first thing is Tidy up the hundred square feet you occupy. Tidy it up. Sensitize you to detecting problems without telling you in so many words. Once that is done, they again call the workers and they ask, have you had any accidents in the plant? A simple one could be an eye burn on the manufacturing. Oh, an eye burn. And they'd get a top management team to work on eye burn. Are you getting the message? By which time when they took, spoke of quality, 
the Americans were willing to listen. So the prerequisites are housekeeping, safety, and then quality. Quantity will just follow. Nobody is going to say, I do bad work. I do faulty work. That's what I would like to add to you. Of course, the, I would say again, ability like what you just described, I burn, and then, then somebody is working on it. And therefore, it's the ability to learn from a mistake, ability to learn from an incident. Uh, that, in fact, there is a Japanese saying, I'm told that every, every defect or every bad incident is a treasure because this gives you an opportunity to learn. But if you take that opportunity to learn, it's a great, great thing. Okay, let me talk a bit. Yes. Is that okay with you, doctor? Yes, of course. That's what we are here for. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my very first client was Tata Steel. Yes. And at Tata Steel, Mr. Modi invited me to talk to the top management. And I, top management, you can't speak quality. You have to speak money. So I spoke about I asked them, what is your cost of work quality? They said, we have a 3% failure rate. They're quite proud of it. And whatever we reject goes to the open market and we get something. So then no cost of work quality. So one thing leading to the other, because support processes, supplier processes, are the hatcheries. We guesstimated what is the cost of work quality. Remember, Tata Steel was the darling of the share market. It still is, but it was very much more than that. So they agreed to 10% of total cost is our cost of work quality. What is your profit? 10% of sales. Okay, how would you like to double your profit without capital investment? Now, that was music to their ears. And uh, every division now started talking about do the pilot work in our area. And do the pilot work in our area, 65,000 people on that campus. So Mr. Modi stood up and said, look, I want to carry the whole organization. I want to create a culture for quality. I don't want to give Kian to the workers. And all. I want to demonstrate to them what is quality. So let's talk of problems that impact the workers the most. And this was leaking roofs in the quarters. Another was uh, garbage not collected at the quarters. So let's write the garbage not collected. Why is the garbage not collected? We have brand new dump trucks from Tata Motors, and they're under warranty. So they're down for repair. So spare parts are not available. So we go to the open market in Calcutta and purchase the spares. What are those? The rejects from Tata Motors. Mm -hmm. Premium price to repair that problem. Obviously it fails. Uh, another problem road piggyback on garbage not collected. Absenteeism. Workers were absent. So 
we went to the smallest division, the tubes division, to demonstrate a pilot project. So what is the cost of poor quality here? A, the cost of an absent employee, because you now bring in a badly, a substitute, who's not as skilled. So the tube lens, the more variability, so the productivity more. And there's an extra step of trimming the tubes. So there's physical evidence of scrap. Now this was the smallest division of Tata Steel tubes. And the cost of work quality in 1989 was 15 lakhs per month. So you diagnose the problem and we went to a worker who was absent. We open the door, he opens the door. And we ask him, Sardar, why are you absent? He looked the picture of health. So it's aise hai, beta bimar. Kya hua? Khas kush mein, sardi zukam. Sardi zukam and you're not attending work? Saab aise hota hai, I go to the Tata hospital on campus where the paperwork takes me some two hours. In those days, there were no computers. Then I wait in a line for the doctor. And the doctor sees me for five minutes, prescribes. Then I have to again wait in line for the prescription. By which time, you have marked me absent for the day. So I don't come. Where was the root cause of the problem? In the hospital, in missions process. When that was addressed from two hours to 20 minutes, we got it. The whole campus of 65,000 people benefited. In 1989, they saved 40 crores per annum. That's fantastic. Dr. J.J. Rani said, if this is the case, we want to become the lowest cost steel producer in the world, which they did in 2000. And that was a long one. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic. In fact, that was your first story. And, and it's good to kind of get connected again today with that. So there is Anshuman Tiwari. I can, Anshu, you can unmute yourself and please... Yeah. So uh, thank you, thank you, doctor. Um, sir, um, my question is more around. You know, of course, we hear these uh, anecdotes, fables, more from Japanese management, and uh, sometimes also, uh, like you shared some stories of Indian leaders. Uh, what will it take for Indian leaders to have more of this, more of empathy, more of thinking? What will be useful for workers? Um, and, and we already saw from the stories that it always helps financially as well. So there is actually money at the end of the uh, good deed, but we still don't see enough stories. So with your experience, what will it take to get them to see the better side? Anshuman, who is the question directed at? <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. You have pointed us with, uh, Mr. Lula, you have pointed us with so many favors. So yeah. the assumption is that you will have the answer. Yeah. I don't have the answer because so long as you have quarter to quarter targets, that in itself is a disease. Even hospitals will have quarterly targets or a monthly target of utilization of equipment. And that's where character sometimes gets tarnished. Mm -hmm. You are meeting targets, you're prescribing, you 
exaggerated and the poor patient has to pay. Is that right? Yes. Um, what I will say is that in relation to healthcare, uh, again, healthcare is very complex. And what has started to happen is that people who had no domain knowledge of healthcare were now driving the healthcare. So they were only driving the balance sheet point of view. So they were not kind of, uh, their whole attitude is to see uh, wherever they can cut corners. So even for them, even the basic things of implementing quality, which is actually going to be useful. And that's where these lessons are. That's where we kind of keep harping on that look, eventually you will save money, but we have not done enough, uh, I would say research in healthcare to show them the cost of poor quality, like what Suresh Lula could show it to Tata's and, and you know, that kind of industry. And therefore what is happening is that in healthcare, uh, any application of good practices is considered as a drain of money. And since they don't have the answers, then what you do is you shut off yourself from the workers and you shut off yourself. So you, you create a kind of a, a very um, peculiar hierarchical structure where the top person is cocoon in a room. He doesn't want to see and meet people because if he meets people, he will be flooded with questions for which he has no answer. So the, the, the issues are complex, but I will say that um, uh, I will not look at it in a very gloomy way. I think that uh, a kind of a movement has started and uh, it is definitely impacting, uh, I would say, uh, the, the movement could be, well, well, let's say, slow, but it is there. It is there and I would say more and more people will understand the need for everything, empathy, as well as uh, the kind of approach that had been highlighted in this fable. But I will say that, forget about the organization, you start getting used to garbage in your own house. It is there where the journey can start. And I think if we can treat our own people, our people who work for us at home and our own environment at home, then I would say that you are going to carry that into your place of work. You cannot become a different person altogether just when you travel from your home to your office. So, but all the same, I am sure there is a whole WhatsApp university nowadays which gives us <laughs> gyan every morning. So hopefully it percolates somewhere someday. That, that WhatsApp university, sir, starts and ends in WhatsApp only. <laughs> doesn't doesn't well, lead to any action. And sometimes people who are sending that message to me, I feel like telling them, boss, have you read it also or not? <laughs> anyway. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lula, for the answer and, of course, uh, Dr. Agarwal for your uh, comments. Thanks. I'll give one final example. Uh, a client in Bombay was expecting quality work. It was also a steel plant. And was not able to get it. Until they started empathizing with the workers. The workers were living in slums. Now, if that is your paradigm of cleanliness, when you come to the factory, you're going to carry the, that kind of paradigm. So the projects were then made for cleanliness, clean living for the workers. And uh, it, it worked miracles. But empathy is it is required empathetic listening, empathetic caring, empathetic emotions, not sympathetic, empathetic. I understand. And, um, that can make a world to any organization.
when the terrorists attacked Taj Mahal Hotel in Bombay. The workers you know, cared for it as their own. It's a case study in harbor. They protected the guest. How do you build such a culture? So, with that, I will pause before oh. go on and on. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I think uh, it had been a wonderful evening with you today. And we look forward to the next one in the month of April. And that's 13th of April. Bank Fable. Tuesday. Features and failures. A bank fable. So we will have features and failures. A right. bank fable. Now, try and learn the practices and do cross-industry benchmarking. Yes. There's so many lessons seeded in all the fables. So, thank you, Suresh, and hope to see you guys in April. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Doctor.